And uh, yeah, yeah. I want to go to the next bit. Isolated uh, Russians. <clears throat> Isolated <clears throat> Russians is what my note says. You were uh, telling me about this earlier. I didn't check this out yet. Yeah, where is this shit? I don't know. What, what's going on? Give us a rundown while you're looking for it. Fuck. Uh, you got it? Andrea knows about this shit. What is going on with these Russian people? Uh, they have been so isolated for so long. It's one family that lives 150 miles away from the nearest civilization and they're completely self-sustained and they didn't even know that World War II happened. That's how isolated they are. What? Hang on. And and so this was discovered back in 1978. Uh, Is that right? <clears throat> I'm fact checking. So they were out there since like 38 to 78-ish, I think. Uh, for some reason, we have this article this week. <laughs> Smithsonian.com. Uh, Siberian summers do not last long. The snows linger into May, and the cold weather returns again during September. Freezing the taiga, which, what the fuck is that? It's a cat. It's a big-ass cat. We saw one earlier, remember? <laughs> yeah. Oh. That video, he was eating that retarded T-A- guy. T-A-I-G-A. Lost in the taiga. Is that some... No, oh, that's like a... Oh, God. Is that like some other word for fucking... It's what the tigers call their homeboys, but only they can <clears throat> say it. <laughs> <laughs> that's their word. All right. Uh, endless miles of straggly pine and birch... <laughs> it's it, That's what it is. Endless miles of straggly pine and birch forest scattered with sleeping bears and hungry wolves. Steep-sided mountains... <laughs> White water rivers that pour in torrents through the valleys, uh, a hundred thousand icy <laughs> bogs. So this is like a big fucking uh, big area of wilderness hell. Uh, so what? What do you got? Uh, a listener has just informed me that it is a cold coniferous forest. Oh, okay. That's what that's what a taiga is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, listener. Thank you for that. Hey, uh, if you the- want, if you want job security next time, just say that you came up with that. No, that was uh, that was Ben in Texas. Oh, thanks to Ben. Uh, thus, thus it was in the remote south of the forest in the summer of 1978. A helicopter sent to find a safe spot to land a party of geologists was skimming the tree line a hundred or so miles from the Mongolian border when it dropped into the thickly wooded valley of an un- uh, unnamed tributary of the Abakan. Uh, <laughs> What is that now? That's got to be a river. Uh, uh, Because it's got a tributary. I'm smart. A seething ribbon of water rushing through dangerous terrain. The valley walls were narrow, with sides that were close to vertical in places. Is this a news article or a thriller novel? Dude, this sounds awesome. Keep reading. And the skinny pine and birch trees swaying in the rotor's downdraft were so thickly clustered that there was no chance of finding a spot to set the aircraft down. But peering intently through the windscreen in search of a landing place, the pilot saw something that should not have been there. It was a clearing, 6,000 feet up a mountainside, wedged between the pine and larch, and scored with what looked like long, dark furrows. <clears throat> The baffled helicopter crew made several passes before reluctantly concluding that this was evidence of human habitation, a garden that from the size and shape of the clearing must have been there for a long time. So, how do these people get out there? Does it tell us? Did they probably just lived there forever. And they were just like, well, there's lots of fucking deer over there, lots of water right there. Ain't there, nobody was bothering there, us. Was there a settlement there at some point or what? No. Uh, no? no they, first of all, when they left, they had two children. Um, and they slowly moved further and further away from civilization. They made like shanty after shanty after shanty. And eventually they just got far enough away that they felt like they wouldn't be disturbed. And they planted a huge garden and started a big farm. And uh, that's how the. That was like the original libertarians. The what? Like the original libertarians. Oh, and then they, they had more kids. I don't know if I said that part or not, but they how had like they- a bunch more kids while they were out there. How long were they out there? Uh, 40 years? 40 years. What the fuck? Isn't that kind of yeah. crazy? Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Uh, the daughters spoke a language distorted by a lifetime of isolation. When the sisters talked to each other, it sounded like a, a slow, blurred cooing. This is what? <laughs> what? <laughs> a slow, blurred cooing. This is what the ar- archaeologist said, I guess, right? Uh, let's see. They were... Uh, when, when they first saw them, uh, they were curious 
<laughs> Where, warily, the three, three strange figures approached and sat down with their visitors, rejecting everything that they were offered. Uh, we are not allowed that, they said. Have you ever eaten bread? I have, but they have not, and they have never seen it. Um, this is the fucking geologist talking to the family when they met him. Uh, the daughter's spoken language distorted by a lifetime of isolation. I said that slowly over several visits, the full story of the family emerged. The old man's name was Karp Lykov. He was an old believer, a member of a fundamentalist Russian Orthodox sect, worshipping in a style unchanged since the 17th century. God, this must have been the worst place ever to grow up. Holy shit. Can I, wait a minute. Like, so you there, think, like, <laughs> oh, I grew up in, like, a small town. There was nothing to do. <laughs> like, holy fuck. These guys, these guys live 150 miles away from anything. I, I can't think of anywhere that I've ever been that was that far away from anything. Are they in, like, fucking Chernobyl fallout zone? Where are these people? Why does nobody live within 100 feet of 150 miles of them? It's a big-ass forest. Like the Siberian forest, like the biggest forest in the world, right? Yeah. Some shit. I'm sure it's not, like, an ideal living environment. And they were just uncontacted for this entire time. That's cool, man. I wish I did that. <laughs> but um, so, uh, I guess, uh, let's see. This says why they did. We didn't talk about why they went out there yet, did we? Um, let's see. I guess they told them the story. The uh, geologist got the story out of them that uh, old believers, which these people were, had been persecuted since the days of Peter the Great. And uh, this Lykov guy talked about it as though it happened only yesterday for him. Peter was a personal enemy and the Antichrist in human form, a point he insisted had been amply proved by his, uh, <laughs> by the Tsar's campaign to modernize Russia by forcibly chopping off the beards of Christians. What? <laughs> this is so great. They've been out in the wilderness 40 years, and, and this is what it comes down like. Well, they were chopping off everyone's beards. <laughs> so, but these. No, they just kill people. It's a- but these centuries old hatreds were conflated with more recent grievances. Uh, Carp was prone to complain in the same breath about a merchant who had refused to make a gift of 26 poods. Is that what the fucking money is called? 26 poods of potato? Oh, it's a pound? Poods. What? Why did they put this? What? Twenty-six poods. P O W or P P O O. Russia doesn't use poods. P O O D S. I don't think anybody poods. does. Poods. Poods. A potato to the old believers in sometime I around. I think Russia uh, is rubles. Isn't it? Nineteen hundred. So he's just talking. This guy's crazy. He's making up a bunch That's of. That's Saudi Arabia. I don't fucking. Poods. Yeah, I never heard. I don't of know. That. You can find what that is. Russia. Back here. In the All day? right. See you later, Brian. Oh, take it easy. Um, poods is. Uh, it's like a Russian slang term for meaning like a lot, a very large amount, very much. This is 26 poods of potatoes. I want a lot of very lot of them 26 <laughs> times now, motherfucker. No, just, that's like saying just like, <laughs> yo, give me like uh, 26, uh, fuck yeah, fuck, a lot. what did it even be? 26 bunches of potatoes. Like, what's that? This very helpfully tells me that it's usually one pood is a unit of mass equal to 40 funt. <laughs> oh boy. Now, well, now I now I Which is sense. a Russian pound. Ah, fucking weird other Oh, so that's 40 pounds? Uh, one. Okay. All right. Got it. 36.11 pounds. 36.11 pounds. And this guy got how many poons? He got 26 poods. 26 <laughs> poods? They were supposed to get it, but they didn't fucking get it. That's why this guy ran out in the goddamn woods for 40 years. So he had so he had how many pounds there? That's like fucking like 300 and Whatever. That's a lot six of six and a half pounds. That's a lot of potatoes to be owed by someone that won't give it to you. Right? Things things had only got worse for the Lykov family when or the atheist that. Bolsheviks took power. Under the Soviets, uh, so this this guy's talking about his whole family history, by the way. This is not just his life. Uh, he's given these guys the story of why he left society. Um, okay, so how do you know this? How do they know this guy didn't just go out? Or they found him, right? Never mind. Yeah, they found him. So he just went and rolled in the fucking dirt for <laughs> like five <laughs> hours. Showed up found, like, listen, you know where I've like been for check, like 20 yeah. years? Check this out. You got some, a fucking author around? He's some accountant that got bored. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, what am I going to do today? <laughs> right, keep Kids, going. This is here. a good story. Um, so uh, the the things only got worse for the Lykov family when the atheist Bolsheviks took power under the Soviets. Isolated old believer communities that had fled to Siberia to escape persecution began to retreat even further from civilization. During the purges of the 1930s, and you guys know about this, the fucking... uh, Russia has an incredibly brutal fucking history with the revolution and all that shit, and 
man, I, there was a lot of people that must have had him run. The communist patrol had shot Lykov's brother on the outskirts of their village while Lykov knelt working beside him. He had responded by scooping up his family and bolting into forest. What? This guy's the smartest guy that ever lived, except for me last week. Yeah. Except for you with your diabetes. Except my diabetes. My diabetes that was in, uh, is now the second most awesome and smartest thing ever. That was in 1936, and there were only four Lykovs then. Karp, his wife, Akolina, a son named Savin, who's nine years old, and Natalia, a daughter who was only two, taking their possessions and some seeds, they had retreated ever deeper into the taiga, building themselves a succession of crude dwelling places until at least they had fetched up in this desolate spot. God, this article is written so weird. This person yeah, must, who is this this must be English is their second language, I'm sure. Um, a lot of it was kind of cool, actually, for a while. It was getting pretty like theatrical, and it was fun, but now this is getting real shitty. Two more children had been born in the wild, Dimitri in 1940 and Agafia in 1943. So and, that's incest, right? No, I think of the parents. The parents weren't brother and sister, but... You got to think that if these people were out there for 40 years, I mean, there was probably some incest going on, I'm sure, right? Like, what are they going to do? You know, well, like, they're going to, the or, or they were fucking animals. The guy they wants were, to touch his children. I mean, nobody's going to stop him ever. Maybe were, that's why he went out there. They were super duper religious and, like, all they had to do well, was. Well, that doesn't Bible. say a lot for child. I'm just saying. Uh, like, <laughs> was Charles Manson religious? No. Was 5,000 priests religious? Well, then I don't have a point, I guess. <laughs> but like, but like I have children, <laughs> knew there were places called cities where humans lived crammed together in uh, tall buildings. They had never heard there were countries other than Russia, but such concepts were no more than abstractions to them. Their only reading matter was prayer books and an ancient family Bible. Oh, God. This sounds fake now. Is this true? No, it can't be true. I think it's true. Where did the, where did we even get this from? Uh, Smithsonian. Yeah, Smithsonian. Is that I the mean, government? Is that the government? Dude, I'm sure this is an old story that a lot of people already know about. Uh, so, anyways, fucking Christ! Uh, can you imagine? This is, this is unbelievable. And I and I contend <laughs> that there must have been incest, right? Don't you think? Absolutely. What is going to yeah, happen? F- there's like four of them, and they're like. <sighs> You know, you're, the wife the wife goes out to go pick some uh, Russian so probably not fucking allowed. pine berries to make some fucking ale out of. And, you know, I mean, your 16-year-old <laughs> is sitting there, you know, trying to start a fire, getting worked up, you know? Oh, yeah. When, you get, when you're trying to start a fire, that's when you really also, get... Also, nobody will ever find out. And if they do, you can kill anybody who does find out. Nobody else will come and get you. Well, you have to question the sanity of anyone that thinks it's okay to, like, raise kids without any other exposure to human beings ever. Because they're, I mean, what are they, in their 30s before they ever saw another fucking human being? I mean, what are they doing (laughs) out there? Well, he thought he was running away from, like, the worst thing ever. They were killing his family members, the motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Cutting people's right. beards off left and right, dude. You know how hardcore that is? And they had no idea when it would be safe to go back. Yeah. No, right. He he thought it was going down. He thought the government had finally lost it. You know? He probably had a really nice beard, this guy. You know? They were, <laughs> After the Soviet geologists got to know the Lykov family, they realized that they had underestimated their abilities and intelligence. Each family member had a distinct personality. Well, of course they did. What are they going to be? They, uh, <laughs> what are they going to be like? Like, oh, they were all for some reason like they looked exactly the same and all spoke in unison. It's like yeah. what? Each family member had a distinct personality. Old Carp was usually delighted by the latest innovations that the scientists brought up from their camp, and though he steadfastly refused to believe that man had set foot on the moon, he adapted swiftly to the idea of satellites. <laughs> You're a liar. <laughs> no, they haven't. I like that, just won't I? Meh, I don't believe it. The Lykovs had noticed them early in the 50s when the stars began to go quickly across the sky. Wait, I wonder if that's what I saw. Satellites. Do you know these guys? Who? Were you there? No, I was talking about my UFO sighting. Oh. Carb convinced it, uh, himself no, I- conceived a theory to explain this. People have thought something up and are sending out fires that are very like stars. That's what he thought it was. <laughs> what a bunch of idiots. <laughs> well, let's go out in the woods for 40 years. Hey, I think people uh, have thought something up and are sending out fires that are very like stars. This guy's great, man. What's his name? I hate him. Uh, fucking, I want to get a t-shirt with name? him on Something there. Karp or Karp Lykov. His name's Karp Lykov. 
It's a piece of shit name. Karplikov? <laughs> Karplikov. It's a shit name. What amazed him most of all uh, was a transparent cellophane package. Lord, what they, what have they thought up? It is glass, but it crumples. And Th- Karp helps- This is fake. This is fake. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Th- who would say that? A guy who's been in the woods for 40 fucking years. It's glass, but it crumples? Yeah, well, what would you say? If you had never seen anything clear, because nothing in nature is he clear. He didn't know about plastic, did he? Right, exactly. He was in from the 30s, dude. No fucking plastic. And Holy Carp, shit. Carp held grimly to his status <laughs> as head of the family, though he was well into his 80s. His eldest child, Savin, dealt with this by casting himself as the family's unbending arbiter in matters of religion. He was strong of faith, but a harsh man, his own father said of him. And Carp seems to have worried about what would happen to his family after he died if Savin took control. Are you sure you didn't just uh, stumble across a fucking uh, short story by some college student and took it as a news article? What's going on here? No, this is a fucking thing. There's, no, this is on Smithsonian.com, dude. Is this guy real right now? Yeah, are any of these people the Smith- alive? The Smithsonian is, uh, you know, I know, are any of these people alive place. right now? Do they? St- where do they live now? Are they... Are I they, don't know. Let's find out some they follow up heads? on that. I mean, what are they doing? Can you look up uh, that stuff during the break? Please. I need to know what happened to these people. It's yes. like a like a saga. We got to take a break, and uh, we're going to look some shit up on that. Uh, once again.